Welcome to the Mariah Report. I'm Dan Enriquez. I'm Martin Burgess. And we got big news this week. Just when you think nothing's happening. I know, right? It happens. She sort of foiled our own plans because we were going to do a back in time this week. I know. It was a good one. You guys will get it next week, but uh, I think, will they? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but she announced the book release. And so we're going to do, we're going to bring in a special lamb. Yeah, our friend Angela McNally. She actually contributed to our Emancipation of Mimi live fan favorite mm-hmm. episode. So you've heard her voice before. Longtime lamb. She is a production manager in publishing. Right. So like well, I tell you, just like we were talking with Mark the other week, we got lambs on the ground everywhere. Yes. So Angela's going to join us in a little bit. But we because we, we got a lot to talk about. We got a lot to unravel. She dropped it on us all at once. I know. And I sort of loved it because, yes. you know, I'm like the type of person like, don't say it and then not say it. Mm-hmm. Just say it. Mm-hmm. And it's good. And the, it's like, OK, I only had to go and go to bed and I wake up and then here, here she is with all the good information. I know. I know. <laughs> but be- right before we get into the book talk, we do have to mention that Mariah finally left the house. It was the week for leaving the house. Was it? I left the house too. Oh, you did? Yeah. I mean, I leave the house to come here and like the grocery store, but... Right. No, I left to the, like the neighborhood. Oh, where'd you go? I went to the beach. Oh, yes. You're a beacher. I am a beacher. And it's the first time I left the island, I think, since last year. Oh, gosh. Because it was like Christmas. I didn't go anywhere after Christmas and New Year's. And then the lockdown pretty much happened soon. Yeah. So I was, I've been in Manhattan the whole you time. You went down to the... Um... I went to Far Rockaway. Far Rockaway, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm, that's good. Well, it was a nice day. It was the day after 4th of July. So it was a Monday, I guess. Or so, after the weekend. Yeah. So it was pretty quiet. Okay. So I thought, let me... And you can keep a safe distance. I was like, let me scope it out. Let me catch the vibes. Yes. So I went with our friend Johnny and we went. It was pretty safe. There's not many people out and about. We got there. Everyone was spread out. Yeah. It's a Monday. It's a Monday. So it was pretty good. There you go. It, it felt good. It was just weird because it felt nice and relaxing to be out of the house and be on the beach and out in nature. Right. But then at the same time, there's this like cloud of, oh, global pandemic still happening. <laughs> By the <laughs> Can't way. forget that. Yeah, it's so weird. Now, um, so we saw a couple pictures of Mariah. One, we saw a beautiful photo on the 4th of July from Christopher Buckle. Yeah. Oh, my God. With the little, they, I don't know where they were. They must have been upstate somewhere. Somewhere. Around Long Island. Somewhere drivable. Yeah, definitely. And then, Hamptons, maybe? Probably. That's where the rich people go, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. They look, Mariah looked gorgeous. Mm-hmm. And then she also was spotted leaving her apartment going somewhere and i was like oh i wonder where she's going she's all masked up and everything she has her natural curls Mm -hmm. which i love and Mm -hmm. she's just you know a girl on the town a new york city girl yeah i was like hey girl and but now that we have like all this book stuff going on i'm wondering hmm was she leaving the house to deliver the final draft of the book maybe (laughs) Yeah. Do you think she was on the typewriter finishing it up? I guess. Maybe. I don't know. I was like, what's going on? Where is she going? But now, like, all this is happening. But, you know, she's just a girl about town. Yeah. So, all right, let's get into the book talk and then we'll bring Angela in. But let's, okay, let's take a deep breath. Mm-hmm. It's a lot to digest. <laughs> it was a lot, girl. It was a lot. She bombarded us. All right. So early this morning... Here's Mariah. The countdown is ticking down yes. on her Instagram page. And then she reveals the title, the the date, and the cover, which we have heavily been talking about and theorizing about. Don't forget, yesterday she revealed that little blurb, that oh, three-paragraph yes. blurb. Oh, yes. That's that very was important. beautiful. Girl, yes. if I, if, I almost shed a tear. I know. Almost shed a tear. Can we read a little bit about that from Mariah? Because it was so well done. Right. Well, here's another thing I just want to point out. Points to the team working on this because, you know, in the past we've had interesting reveals for Mariah's projects, but this has been being executed so well There's, and perfectly. The team is right on point here. Yeah. So the other day she released a little note and there were so many good things in this note. And I was like, I can't wait to read this book just from this note alone. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to read a couple of excerpts from it really quick. It took, she says, it took me a lifetime to have the courage and the clarity to write my memoir. First of all, mm-hmm. right off the top, mm-hmm. I'm gagged already. Yeah. Because we've been waiting. Yeah. We've been waiting, but this is the right time. Right. She's she's grown. She's seen it. She's been there. She's a mother. She's d- twice divorced. Yes. The ups and downs. But we also know she's very reserved and doesn't really tell stories. Mm-hmm. But this is her telling us, no, 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 I'm here. I'm ready. 
Yes, exactly, because she goes on to say, though there have been countless stories about me throughout my career and very public personal life, it's been impossible to communicate the complexities and depths of my experience in any single magazine article or a 10-minute television interview. Mm -hmm. And it's so true because like, you know, for lambs who have been reading and watching Mariah, we think we have such a grasp on who she is. But this book is going to bring us to a whole nother level. I think she's going to ruin our business. (laughs) (laughs) Going to be like, wait a minute. Do we actually know her? Who is this woman? (laughs) Um, But then at the end, she says, writing this memoir was incredibly hard, humbling, and healing. My sincere hope is that you are moved to a new understanding, not only about me, but also about the resilience of the human spirit. Ooh, Mariah. Mm, Ooh, Mariah. Give me chills. Don't do it, girl. (laughs) (laughs) So already we know it's juicy. Mm -hmm. She's going there. Because she does say she's going to go through the ups, downs, the, the, what did she say? The stumbles. The betrayals. Yes, yes. Oh, gosh. Oh, I can't wait. I know. It's going to be so, so good. So we had that little teaser. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. Followed by a countdown, Mm -hmm. which people got in a frenzy because it could have been the book release. Oh, it turned out it was going to be just be the title, right? And the cover art. Yeah, absolutely. But here's the thing: like anybody, if you really think about it, she would not have released the book, nah. Like uh, with a countdown, because like mm-hmm. I think Angela's going to tell us. You just like people would know. Mm-hmm. Like the book has been printed and shipped. Somebody would know. Someone's and you know seen us, it. Lambs. Yeah. We got the magnifying glass. We would we would have known. Yeah, it was in the warehouse. Well, speaking of. So let's introduce our co-host of the day. It's longtime lamb, friend of ours, Angela McNally, production manager at one of the publishing houses here, mm-hmm. in, here in the country. Welcome, Angela. Hi, Lamb. Hi, Dan and Martin. Thank you for having me. <laughs> you were the first person we thought of when yeah. it came, came to Mariah's book. I said, I bet Angela got some of the backstory here. She knows how all this goes. Well, lo and behold, me and Dan don't know anything about publishing. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> so we had to get an expert in. Yes, publishing is a very, very interesting industry. It's very complicated, but I am intimately familiar with the process that Mariah's book would be at right now. So I am happy to give the Lamely a little bit of insight into what might be going on behind the scenes. Yeah, we need to know. Absolutely. But before we get into that, Angela, we need to like solidify your lambdom here. So we got a couple Mariah (laughs) questions to fire off at you. First, how long have you been a lamb? I became a lamb in 1990 when I was 10 years old. And, well, let me backtrack. 10 years old is when I got MTV in my house. Okay. So that is, I started seeing Mariah Carey's videos on MTV. And I really became a lamb with the unplugged performances that she gave because those were on MTV just on EP right. in uh, the early 90s. Well, that'll so do it. That is when, yeah, that is when she became forever and always my diva. <laughs> I love it. Old school lamb. Mm-hmm. Okay. And as of today, what are your top three albums in no particular order? I'm going to say Caution and Rainbow. Mm. And mm, I'm going to say Memoirs. All okay. Right. Yeah, All right. I, think okay. so. I love that you didn't pick like the classic go tos, which are like Mimi, Butterfly, Butterfly or Daydream. Because those uh-huh. are like, I mean, Standards. we love them all, but yeah. they're standards. Mm-hmm. Angela, got, she's a little, she's out there. She got all the good things, the little trinkets that no one knows about. Today, I was really enjoying Chanteuse. It's such a good summer album. And the vocals are beautiful. Yeah. Love it. Mm-hmm. And I was playing it on Spotify and it has the whole album as a, as a, unit with with hashtag beautiful and your mind eternal which are not on my itunes because i bought them oh. separately so good as a whole album oh yes you got to listen to it from beginning you know mariah yes, always yes. is creating the story i know so good all right so today angela we got the book title and the release date so like at that stage during the process of publishing a book what comes next well interestingly i myself am working on a title with the exact same on sale date Ooh, right now of competition. September 20th. Yes, of September 29th. So I am on a similar schedule as whoever is managing Mariah's book right now. Uh. So the way that it works in trade book publishing in general is the books have an on sale date. And the on sale date is God, is king, is queen, and everything works backwards from the on sale date. It's very deadline driven. Okay. And 
in general for the big publishers, Macmillan, Mariah's Publishing House is one of the big five publishing companies here in New York. And uh, when you're at that size, everyone is pretty much using the same printers and binders and producing books on roughly the same schedule. So in general, books will need to be received into the warehouse um, of the publishing company a month before the on-sale date. Mm. And that is that is so that the books can be prepped and ready to ship out to whatever account they need to go to, um, like Barnes & Noble, for example, or Amazon or Target. So I am going to guess that the warehouse date for Mariah's memoir is August 28th. Mm. Um, that would be, I think, the, the general warehouse date. It's possible that they have a contingency plan in place. The printers and the whole industry is under a lot of challenges right now because of the pandemic. And we've had to be much more fluid with our schedules and much more lenient with our deadlines. So it is possible that they have a plan in place to sort of get ahead of some of those challenges. But if they didn't, they're probably on a normal schedule. So the books will, will probably hit the warehouse around the end of August. And that means that Jacket will probably be printing near the beginning of August, first week, second week of August. And the books will be bound up maybe around like the third week of August if they're going to stay on that schedule. Okay. So you, so, mm-hmm. so that's going to be like actual, the actual making of the book. But you know, Mariah's been working on this book for many years. Typically, how many drafts would a book like this go through? I mean, obviously, it could, every situation is different. But do you think that Mariah literally just handed in her final draft, like, you know, yesterday, yesterday, like she said, like delivered? Oh, no, 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 no. Impossible. Okay. Definitely not. For a book, a fiction book, or maybe nonfiction, nonfiction can be a little harder if there are elements like an index, but for a a nonfiction title with no index or anything, a memoir like this, a nice, lenient, comfortable book schedule from, you know, Mariah handing the manuscript to her editor to the text being final is like five months, maybe, you know, four Mm. four to six months. Mm -hmm. In the biz, we call it a crash schedule if you have to make a book in like three months. Mm-hmm. Oh. Making making a book happen that quickly is extremely difficult and very, very challenged. So I certainly don't think Mariah is on that kind of schedule. At least I hope not. I think that the book is getting close to being uh, having final text. So the way that it works is the author, you know, writes their book. Um, Mariah's got her you know, her little pen with the butterfly charm and the pinky up in the air, and she's writing out her book. She hands the manuscript to her editor. In this case, I guess there was an in-between with her sort of Mm co-writer. And then her editor takes the book, and the manuscript will then be reviewed by the editor and then get sent out for copy editing, which is just cleaning up things like sentence structure, continuity issues, making sure that the style is consistent throughout. And then it gets handed off to what we call production editorial and pr- production. And then it just starts what you were asking about, these rounds of correction. The book gets designed. It gets set at its trim size. The typefaces are chosen. Any chapter opener flares and drop caps are designed. And then the book sort of gets taken away from the author and editor a little bit, and it just starts doing its round of corrections. In publishing, we call them passes. So a first draft is really in the writing process. But once an author is handed a manuscript over and it gets taken by production editorial, then it becomes a pass. So first pass of Mariah's book is the first time the book is set at the trim size with all of the right typefaces in the design. And then that will get read by the author. Mariah would have looked at First Pass. First Pass contains all of the copy editing changes and proofreading changes that have been initially been made. So Mariah would have been able to review all of those changes and accept them or reject them based on her preference and what her editors advise. And after First Pass gets looked over, then um, it's usually hard copy. 
hard copy markup with copy editing marks and whatnot, those corrections then get sent out to be implemented into the book files. And then we get to second pass, where again, it's another round of people reading the pages, looking for errors, looking for typos, making corrections. Usually authors don't even see the book in second pass. We do make exceptions where we allow authors to continue to fudge in second pass. But usually the heavy lifting with corrections is made in copy editing and first pass. And from that point forward, we just sort of trust uh, the publishing house and the people working on the book to uh, use you know, their skills and talent and fix any little things that are kind of inconsequential. So a book like this, probably three passes, maybe four, but I don't think it would go beyond that. So yesterday when she said delivered, was that part of the marketing strategy? Did somebody tell her, go ahead and say this, or was something approved for her to go ahead and do that? Well, I put my lamb eyes on and I examined that photo very carefully. Under normal non-pandemic times, and if Mariah wasn't a superstar, if this was just a normal book, then probably something that we call galleys would have been made from the first pass. A galley is just a trade paperback printing in a limited quantity of the book in its first pass state that gets sent out to people that might be interested in reading the book. It's a marketing tool. Mm. So the photo of what Mariah posted where she said, you know, delivered, it looks to me like a bound galley. It has, you know, it's really mm. a, a trade paperback format. If you look closely at the photo, okay, there's, yeah. a little, there's a little binding edge there. Yeah. However, that photo is, I think, some rigor mortis trickery. You know, it is a perfect, a perfect rectangle. So it looks like somebody literally just took the, the photo, like the front cover file and just dropped it in to sort of a template of a bound galley. But it's completely possible that a bound galley could have been made and that that's what she's seeing. It's just her first pass printed out and used as a marketing tool. I will say that because of the pandemic and publishing having to adapt to different ways of marketing, we are publishing far fewer physical bound galleys. We're sending out e-galleys. It's sort of like um, like an e-book, but made from an early pass of the text. So it could all be sort of smoke and mirrors. You know, here's my book as a galley, but really it's just sort of for the public to see that her book is making progress. Yeah, it's sort of just like, you know, putting it out there to let to let the people know. Yes, putting it out there to let the people know, to give them a visual, to make them, you know, salivate over holding the real book in their hands like I am. <laughs> right. Cannot wait, cannot wait. Now, a couple other things I wanted to quickly talk about are the price point and how many pages the book is. Now, for like, I don't know anything about books, especially now that I'm into audiobooks, which I can't wait for Mariah. We'll talk about Mariah's portion of her audiobook. But how many pages is typical for like someone of Mariah's stature or anybody's memoir? Like, is that average 390 something pages or is that too little, too much? What's like typical? I would say that it's average. Um, her book is printing at a standard hardcover trim size, which is six and an eighth by nine and a quarter inches. And the book size relates to the page count because really we just look at how many we look at how many words are in you know the word document of the manuscript, and that can kind of correlate to the page count. So 368 pages, I think, is very typical. It's not overly long, but it's definitely not too short. Just as a strange thing about publishing is that in general, book print in the page count is divisible by 16. It has to do with oh. uh, how the manufacturing equipment prints the pages and they fold them up into these packets of pages and they cut the edges off and bind them that way. So that's why it's 368, which may seem like a, straight, a strange number to end on, but it's because it's divisible by 16. Oh, I never um, knew. Never knew. So the book is available for pre-sale now on all the platforms, I think. Now, what about the price point? And what what does somebody make from publishing a book? Like, what is the profit? I'm certain that there was a bidding war for this book. 
So the price point seems normal to me. It's twenty nine ninety nine. Although I think that Amazon is having a pre sale discount for twenty ninety nine. Don't quote me on that. So twenty nine ninety nine, I think, is a standard hardcover price point. It says to me that we will be getting a book in keeping with other celebrity memoirs. We won't be getting anything at the level of like Prince's recent book that was published or the Beastie Boys recent book. Those are really like more serious packages. Mm-hmm. But Mariah's book, I think, is, is very in keeping with comparable books. I will say one thing that I noticed about the trim size is that it's, it's a little technical, but because of the trim, I could tell that there won't be any photos in the book that will bleed fully off the page on all sides. We better get a photo insert with this book. The price point would certainly allow a photo insert, but it just means that the photos probably will only bleed off the front edge or maybe the top and the bottom, but not fully off every side. Mariah, I assume, is making her money in her advance. I I wish I knew what it was, but I am not privy to such information, even with my own publishing company. I don't generally learn about advances. I mean, you hear about it when it's massive, like Michelle Obama's advance was huge um, for her book, but I'm sure that Mariah's advance was sizable. The way that it works is the bigger advance an author gets, you know, they get more money up front, but they get less money in the long run. Usually when a smaller author gets a small advance, what happens is they get, um, as the book as the book sells through more and more units over time, over months, over years, the authors get a certain you know, percentage of those book sales. But you have to, how can I phrase this? You have to sort of pay off your advance first before you then start earning money on the book sales. Mm-hmm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. You so recoup. the bigger your Yes, you have to recoup. So the bigger your advance, you know, you get that money right away, but you may not see any earnings from your book sales for a long time until, you know, many, many reprints down the road and then you start earning money back again. Oh. Got it. So more but Mariah she got her coin. She got paid. She got paid. We're having <laughs> Christmas in Aspen still. <laughs> And I'm sure yes. she's not worried. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a quick splash break. But Angela's Angela, going to stick with us. Yes, can you stick around until after the break? We're going to talk more book talk. Angela? We got to talk the cover. We got to talk the everything, title. girl. Yes, we haven't even yes, touched absolutely. upon it. So we will be right back. <laughs> 